Shalom, peace and blessings, peace and blessings. Mark the Messenger, we're back in our video. This one's gonna be about how to recognize the Holy Spirit. A lot of people ask me um, topics about the Holy Spirit. So I'm gonna be start making more videos on the Holy Spirit. But this is number one thing you gotta recognize, man, when it comes to the Holy Spirit. One thing I noticed too as well, five, six years on this walk, is you're gonna have godly confidence, okay? This is in 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. It says, I'll leave a verse right here too. So it says, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Okay, so it says, we will have boldness in the day of judgment. Because you know what? Every, everyone is like, not, I, don't, I won't say everybody, but most people are fearful when it's, when it's time for all of us to get judged because, you know, we have all committed sin, you know, and some people have committed um, sins that are unforgiving, you know, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit uh, or some, you know, some people have done some dirt they haven't repented of. Uh, some people weren't walking with Christ. So when they go in the day of judgment, they won't have no boldness, uh, no boldness. And they're going to hope for God's mercy and grace upon them. But for those people who are walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, walking in their obedience, walking with Christ. OK, when the day of judgment comes, we're going to have we're going to be bold. OK, this is what the scripture says. Like I said, I'll leave it somewhere on the uh, screen, maybe here or here. OK, so one thing I noticed about. When it comes to confidence, godly confidence, the Bible even says in the book of Proverbs that through the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. So you see how every people of this world, they try to get confidence, like especially like women, they try to get confidence by putting on eyelashes or putting on like makeup or maybe wearing push-up bras and stuff like that, right? That's all like physical, material, carnal things, right? Or a man, he may want to get confidence and... Um, Maybe some people take steroids or maybe they go into the gym. Nothing wrong with going to the gym, but you know, stuff like that. It's just things, for example, right? But true confidence come, comes with, uh, within. Okay? True, true confidence comes with having the fear of God in you, you know, having the Holy Spirit. So that's one thing you have to recognize when it comes to the Holy Spirit is that the number one thing is that you're going to be extremely confident. I'm not afraid. Like, I remember when I was first making videos, like, I was kind of like afraid and nervous. Like, what if my videos, like, what if my friends see my videos? Because I was going deep on the spiritual warfare back when I was new. And the main reason why I made my YouTube channel because I had no one to talk to this about. And now, five years later, I have almost a lot of subscribers. But anyways, so that's one thing I noticed. Like, when I was like a baby, like, you know, crawling in my walk, right? I would notice that I would be kind of like afraid. Not that I was afraid, but like... I don't want to get like judge or cast the stone at me because we know the Bible says that you're not supposed to cast your pearls on the swine. So like I was like afraid of the backlash, you know, like I don't want to have to deal with that type of energy. But as you mature, as you age, as you become spir spiritually mature, man, I'm telling you, this godly comes, you're not going to care what a hater got to say, a demon got to say. You don't care, bro. Like you, woo I'm telling you, man. The Holy Spirit, man, it might make you woo. It might make you feel good, bro. The, this inside you, you know your identity in Christ, which comes with true confidence. You have the fear of God in you. Okay, so number two is recognizing the Holy Spirit is the love of the truth, man. You know, the truth being Christ, the truth being uh, the law, statute, and commandments. Okay, so you have to have a true love for them. When you have the Holy Spirit, your desire is no longer living for your own self before you were born again. You know, back when you're living for the world, living to impress vanity pretty much all all correlates to vanity it's no longer about that when you have the holy spirit and you're walking in the holy spirit and power not to say that you're gonna be without sin not gonna say that you're not gonna battle we all battle i battle okay so but it's just that you have a love for the truth that even though you may be struggling you're not gonna be like the average person and make excuses you're not gonna be like the average person and just willfully give being given over to uh your your sin you know you're gonna be like okay like you know I know the truth. God has revealed the truth to me. So now it comes with great responsibility because much is given, much is required. So now it requires me to put this truth into action and, to, and walk in it and walk in the spirit. Okay. So you just have a love for the truth. That's recognizing the Holy Spirit. Uh, you're no longer easily offended. Like the most people, they get offended at the truth. You know, the Bible even says in Galatians chapter four, verse 16, am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth, but you're going to love the truth. And, and what, what you're learning from the Bible or from people, um, uh, whatever content creators you're watching, whatever, right? Whatever preacher, uh, any, anything, right? What most people will get offended by, you actually love it because like, you know, that's the truth and you're learning. And you're like, wow, I want more of it. You want more of it. But people in the world, the truth, it offends them. It pushes them away. Stuff like that. Okay. So that's what the Holy Spirit does, man. You're going to have a love for the truth. Okay. Number three is the word of God dwells within you, all right? So the Bible talks about um, 
that the covenant that God will make in the last days with his people, that he will write their laws within their heart, okay? And one thing I noticed about um, walking in the Holy Spirit is that every issue I face in life, not just a bad issue, a good issue too, like the Bible, there's always a Bible verse that correlates with what I'm going through. Like I said, it's not always bad. And that's one thing I noticed. It's like, wow, like now I've studied to show myself approved. I read the Bible front to back twice already, almost three times. I haven't, I'm like two and a half times, but I, I read the Bible a lot of times and maybe that's also why too as well. I just, everything I'm going through, there's always a Bible verse that, then it helps me, it helps me go through what I'm going through. Now, like I said, it's not always a bad thing. It could be, I could be a good thing where the Bible verse is motivating me to stay on the path. The Bible verse is letting me know that the blessing is near through because of my obedience and stuff like that. So it's not always bad, but I do notice that the word of God dwells richly in you. And best believe guys, if people had the word of God in their lives, their lives will be a lot less problems. Not to say that you're never gonna have problems because you know, it's life we live in, but uh, it's gonna be, and let's say if you do have your problems, right? You're gonna be easily, you'll easily know how to navigate through it because you have wisdom. Okay, the word of God is wisdom. You have knowledge, you have understanding which is the Bible says to, over and over to get wisdom, knowledge, understanding. So the word of God is going to richly dwell within you through the Holy Spirit. So that's the Holy Spirit. Every time, guys, I go through things, like I said, it's not always bad. It could be good too as well. I notice like, wow, this is the Holy Spirit speaking to me. Okay, the Holy Spirit always speaks to the people who belongs to God. Okay, so number four is set apart. Yes, man, set apart true holiness. A lot, lot, a lot of the churches... Uh, and religions, they teach you about holiness, but no one really talks about being set apart, which being set apart means being holy, but being set apart means coming out from among them, doing the opposite of what this world does, okay? We all know this world, the Bible says that Satan is the God of this world, okay? That's in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 to 4, okay? So when you're of this world, you got to understand who you're serving. Okay, you're not serving the most high when you're of this world. Okay, that's why the Bible says to come out from among them and be set apart and touch not the unclean thing and the most high will receive you. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14 to 17. Okay, so being set apart, just to pretty much doing the opposite of what the world is doing. And this is not going to be something that you have to strive for. Absolutely not. It's going to be in you. You're going to be, when you are when you have the Holy Spirit, it's not something, oh, I got I to gotta give up the world. Oh, man, you know, no, bro. It's going to be the complete opposite. You're no longer going to have a passion or desire to impress people. Uh, you know, validation, vanity, we, it's, it's over, bro. You're born again. That life is dead, man. That life is gone. Rest in peace. Okay, so it's a new life, right? So set apart, man. That's, that's, not, that's another one. Number five is... When it recognizing the Holy Spirit is you're going to have a passion and desire to follow Christ, okay? A lot of people, best believe, a lot of you, they won't tell you this, but they know that how strong and bold and courageous uh, that a lot of you guys who chose to walk this narrow path, who chose to watch, to walk the righteous path, a lot of people have, have been had the conscience to know between that, that narrow path and the path that, you know, leads to damnation, right? A lot of people know that, but a lot of people don't have the strength, they don't have the courage that comes with the, that responsibility to walk that path. They know about it. A lot of people, guys, trust me, man. Your friends that you chill with, you know, your friends that you hang out with, party with, drink with, stuff like that, right? A lot of them know. They know about this path, but they just, you know, like I said, it comes with hate. It comes with having no friends or, you know, maybe not many friends. Uh, maybe your family, your family turns against you. That's most likely going to happen. Uh, maybe you might lose your your girlfriend, your boyfriend. You know, whatever the case is, uh, case is, a lot of people know about it, but you know, you know, they just reject it. They don't have that true love for the truth, man. You know, they're, they're lacking that confidence. Okay, they're lacking the word of God, most importantly. Okay, so recognizing the Holy Spirit, man, you you understand that you're, it's a passion, it's a desire to follow Christ. It's no longer a burden. Yes, the Bible does say, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow Him. Okay, which is which does come with persecutions. It does comes with hate, slander, stones cast at you. Yes, okay. But even in the midst of it all, you have the Holy Spirit. You know where your calling is. Men, you're called if you are chosen. You know what God has chosen you to do. And no matter what happens, you're just walking straight and narrow. And you know that the Bible says that when you're a weak, you are actually strong. So when you're fighting, when you're fighting the good fight of faith, when you're fighting against your flesh, when you're struggling, you know through the word of God that you're actually stronger. Okay, so you know, God gotta mold you up to become who you're supposed to be. Okay, so number six is when it comes to recognizing the Holy Spirit, and this could have been number one, 
but it's, it's a conviction to live and walk in the spirit, okay? It pretty much means a conviction to not live in your sin, not to be dead in your sin, okay? It's a conviction to do what's right. That's what the Holy Spirit's all about, and that's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. That's the Holy Spirit teaching you. So this is how to recognize the Holy Spirit in your life, guys. Is God, I'll let you guys see. A lot of people say I blocked the screen. At the end of my videos, I always show you guys the full screen. But anyways, so number one is godly confidence. Number two is love for the truth. Number three is the word of God dwells within you. Number four is set apart in holiness. Number five is passion and desire to follow Christ. And number six is conviction to live, walk in the spirit so you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So I hope you guys got edified from this video. If you guys made it so far, you guys wish to support me. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment below and share this video and all social media platforms. I love you guys so much. I'm out. Peace.